everybody and welcome back finally to another episode of Adventures with Andy. I'm so sorry it's been so long since I've uploaded a new video, but my tripod broke in a way that I was not comfortable putting my camera on it because I wasn't sure it would be able to support it and I didn't want my camera to break. So I had to order a new tripod and I took the opportunity to get a much better, sturdier, higher quality tripod. And I had to order that in off the internet. But it is here now so we can do a new video, which is perfect because it's just in time for the April 2021 dialogue with Kim Nitz. And this is one I really want to do. I'm so excited for this because this, this month's inspiration photo is this shot of the northern polar cap of Mars. This is actually a false color image um, that is a composite um, from several observations from Odyssey. And it's done false color where the blue represents the colder temperatures and the sort of orangish brown represents warmer temperatures. And these are dunes, natural dunes that surround the northern polar cap on Mars. Um, and it's very cool. <laughs> I'm even wearing my NASA knit t-shirt for this one. I am a bit of a space nerd, if you can't tell. So, today we are going to dye some Dyer Supplier Sparkle Sock Yarn. This is the first time I will ever be using this yarn for anything. Um, haven't knit with it, haven't dyed it. Uh, but I thought it'd be perfect for this because it's all sparkly, like stars in space. This is, and yes, I'm gonna have to read notes off of here because I don't know this yarn. <laughs> this is 70% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 10% silver stellina. Uh, it is a fingering weight yarn and is 402 yards. I also have here a yarn mop. Um, a new one. We've got one that we haven't completely used up all of the possible uh, moppage of it, but I want to get a new one for this one. And we are going to be using the Chef Master Neon Gel, Liquid Gel Food Colors. And we're going to be using it in blue and orange. And I'm not going to pick up the orange because apparently some of it has leaked onto the outside and I already got it all over my fingers once already and I don't want to get it on the yarn um, but what I've got planned is I'm going to start by dip dyeing this end this end yeah this end of the yarn it doesn't really matter which end <laughs> but I'm going to dip tie it um, from one end in the orange just a very very light orange okay and then I'm going to turn it over and dip dye the other end in a very very light blue and then we're going to add a whole lot of resist and dye it again the whole thing in either blue maybe purple maybe black i haven't decided um because we want to try to approximate those black squigglies especially in in the blue part of the photo so that's what we got planned uh without further ado let's dye some yarn Okay, the crock pot's on, but the water's not actually hot yet. And I soaked the yarn and the, the yarn mop um, just for like maybe 15, 20 minutes in, in the water just to get them wet. Basically also because we looked at the camera, it's like, oh, low battery. Yeah, been a while since we used this. Probably ought to charge the battery up. That only takes like 15, 20 minutes, so that's how long it's the yarn soaked. I've mm. mixed up, this is just five drops of the Chef Master's Neon Orange in some water. Uh, so like I said, I don't want a lot of color at this stage. I don't want to dye this whole skein of yarn. I just want to dye part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in there. And it's such a light amount of color that even if you could look at the crock pot, you wouldn't see it. Um, I thought this time when I'm doing a dip dyeing, 
instead of pointing at the crock pot, I would let you see me do it this way. I don't think I've done that before. So I'm just going to dip it in. I really don't want the color to go much past the halfway point. So that's why I used so little dye. It's not a lot of dye for this much yarn. So just dip it in and pull it out. You can see it's just given just the barest amount of color at this point. But it's given some. And if you remember from my inspiration photo, it wasn't a really dark orange. And there were the lower parts of the dunes are in shadow and are there. Therefore, um, they're colder. So even on the orange side, they would be lighter. And it's just the tips of the dunes that are a darker orange. I also have no vinegar in here yet. And I am thinking about putting some in at this point. Check and see how much color we have left. Not a whole lot, actually. Sticking up pretty good so far. Okay, this is such a faint, faint amount of color that I'm actually thinking about adding some more dye to this. Five drops might not have been quite enough, so I'll just scoop some of the water out of the drop pot. I just don't want it to be a dark, bright orange for this. I know times in the past, like painting pumpkins and, and stuff like that, I wanted just a true bright orange orange. And this time I don't want that. And this, of course, is where it all goes awry, isn't it? I'm also going to go ahead and put a splash of vinegar in here. No, I don't have my measuring spoons. Everything is over on the other side of the garage. And so I'm just eyeballing it today. You gotta remember that things are darker when they dry, or things are darker when they're wet than when they dry. So with the very, very light color that's on this now, when it's dry, it wouldn't really have much of anything. Oh yeah, this is much more like what I'm wanting. This is much better. It's turned into a very pretty orange. I am curious to see how this looks when it's done because I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a huge fan of orange and blue together. I know that they are complementary colors. They are opposite each other on the color wheel. I'm just, I'm not a big fan of, I guess I'm not really a big fan of complementary colors together in general. I mean, I love purple, but purple and yellow, you're probably not gonna see me wearing a purple and yellow striped shirt anytime soon. Red and green is Christmas. Um, and it always just screams Christmas to me. Um, and blue and orange, I don't know, they just, it always feels like they're fighting to me. They don't seem harmonious. So while I'm doing this, I guess I'll take the opportunity to say, if you have not seen the footage yet, there is footage of the first 
mechanical flight by humans on another planet, namely Mars. Um, you should go out and check it out on the NASA website. I'll try to remember to include a link. But the new rover, is it the rover Perseverance? I think yes. so. The, the new rover Perseverance, of course, um, landed on Mars. Things went perfectly for the seven minutes of terror. And then it deployed Ingenuity which is essentially its little quadcopter and they did all the checks and everything and got everything set up and then ingenuity flew up three meters in the air hovered and then came back down again apparently it's on the second flight i haven't seen the video of the second flight yet but i've seen the video of the first flight and Okay, it's not a manned flight, but it is the first time human beings have flown a mechanical aircraft on another planet. And I think that is amazing. I mean, to think that we're doing that from this far away. I mean, the technology involved is just incredible. Have you seen the footage, Chad, mm -hmm. of both flights or just the first one? Just the first one. Did you know they had done a second one? I had seen headlines, yeah. Yeah. I saw the headlines, I just haven't seen the video yet. Do you and I saw today? What's that? I saw a picture of the cat's paw nebula. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you know the cat's eye mm -hmm. nebula. That's a famous one. But apparently there's one that's called the cat's paw. It has toe beans. It's <laughs> so cute. It's getting closer. Okay. While this is soaking up the last little bit of that, I'm going to try wrapping this around here. Let's try to keep it up out of the water. Work with me, yarn. Work with me. Work with me. Stay. Just stay. Okay. I'm going to go and grab some more water so that I can mix up the blue. Oh, that's good. All right, so we still got a little bit of color left in the water. So I'm going to go ahead at this point, toss our yarn mop in so that it can try to grab that because I want this dye bath completely clear before we move over to the blue. Okay, so. The dye bath is looking pretty clear now. I don't see any color in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. The water is getting warm. So use my tongs to wring it out. Yeah, you hear that sizzle? Shot my yarn mop. That's yeah, it didn't get a whole lot of color on it because there wasn't a lot in there. Okay, so I mixed up the blue dye, and I'm not gonna lie, this color is a little bit darker than I was expecting. It's got me a little scared, so I'm gonna start by putting in only about half of it. color to start with. See how that looks on our yarn. And let's go with this hat.
Yeah, I definitely think that shade of blue is probably right. And I don't think we're going to need to use the rest of that dye at this point. Don't worry, it won't go to waste. No dye left behind, right people? Now, of course, blue takes longer to strike, so this is going to take its sweet time to exhaust this dye back. But we're doing pretty good already. It's not bad. So our dye bath is pretty close to exhausted. It's just a very, very pale blue. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead, put our yarn mop in, and let it soak that last little bit up. Okay, so now that we have our two halves dyed, orange and blue, it's time to put our resist in. And I've let the yarn cool um, the orange side is cold. The blue side is mostly cool. This is super washed though, so it shouldn't be too unhappy. Too unhappy. And I've got all of these silicone zip ties here. And yes, we are quite possibly going to use all of them because I am just going to go through and put these one right after another. So there's just a very little bit of yarn that's showing between them. I'm going to start in the middle because I might leave some of the ends not dipped in our next dye color. And I'm going to do these really tight, which is why I wanted to make sure the yarn was cool. But like I said, it's super washed and should be okay. Just that tiny amount of yarn there. And that's what we're gonna do all three of Yes, we have a new very special guest staying in our house. Muffin from ARFP. If you've ever been to the Animal Rescue and Foster Program Next Step Adoption Center in Greensboro, um, at least within the past 10 years or so, then you have probably met Muffin. She is the gray and white cat that has been the official greeter and resident cat at ARFP for her whole life now. Um, she is staying with us now. She's 10 years old now and she is, uh, she went into kidney failure last year. And thanks to some wonderful vets and dedicated ARFP volunteers, um, 
She is stable now. Um, she does still have kidney disease though, and that's just gonna be a lifetime thing. She gets medicine periodically. She gets fluids every day. And the executive director of ARFP thought about it and decided that it would be best for Muffin instead of being up at the adoption center where there are cats coming and going all the time. Um, lots of different people that, you know, she doesn't know coming and going all the time. That would be best for Muffin to go to a retirement home. And we were the ones who they asked if we would take her. And, you know, my heart just about burst with just happiness and pride when they said that. I mean, just to be the ones that they trust to take care of Muffin, just that is an honor. And that's who you hear me howling. Okay, so this is my, this is my last zip tie. I was expecting them to go all the way, but I ran out. So apparently that's as far as we're going. Now we're heading into phase two of dyeing this yarn. Okay, so now we're gonna put this color in. This is a mix of the Chef Master Neon Purple with some of the orange and a little bit of blue to make sort of a, you can't get black with food coloring. Wilton's has a black food coloring, but it's sort of a purplish black. And I've, I have managed to dye yarn black, a true black with food coloring, but it takes like three days to do it, which is not what I want to do with this. This is more sort of a brownish black. So we can go ahead and put this in here. And we're starting with a small amount of dye at this point. But we don't have as much that we're going to be dyeing. You can see because of the vinegar in the dye bath, that red's already crashing out. Okay, and I'm gonna see if I can get my little um, insectoid looking yarn in here. And we're just gonna go ahead and put this in here. And fight with it. Don't fight me. Do what I want. Darn you. And now this just needs to sit here like this until the dye bath exhausts. Now what's tough about it is I don't want to let this go. But I also don't know if I want to lean the yarn back over the side of the crock pot because I don't want to risk burning it. But you can see here what happens when it gets in there. So that is a toughie. I'm not sure how to do that. Okay, so we're just gonna let this sit like this um, until the dye bath exhausts. And then I will turn the crock pot off and let it cool overnight. And here's our finished yarn. We got some, some interesting color here. There are some things I really like about this. I like where the blue and the orange blend together. I love these little uh, sort of stripey spots here, especially here on the orange side. It reminds me of tabby stripes on a cat. Um, and then they turn out really good here on the blue too. And I think that color wise, we came up with a really good, um, representation of the inspiration photo. Um, 
I really, really like the sparkle. I, I think the sparkle is very, very pretty. We do have some sections here where we got a lot more um, of the, the brown here. It definitely is brown. It's not even close to black, and that's fine. Um, and where we did the resist to get these little stripes, it didn't go very far into the yarn. Really just the first, just the very top layer or so of the skein, it, we didn't get much penetration at all. Um, I don't know how we could do that with a resist method like that without making it wider. Um, the only other way I could think of to do it is to do this like low immersion in a catering steam pan and use squirt bottles to squirt stripes on it, but then, you know, there's still the possibility it's going to spread. So I don't know. I'll have to think about that because um, I would have liked them to have gone all the way through and that just didn't happen anywhere. Up here, uh, we have another little boo-boo where I accidentally dropped the yarn when I was checking on at one point and some of the blue got into that brown dye bath and you can see that, you know, with the red, we got some purple. It's okay. We like purple here. And this is what it knits up like. Um, this is, of course, our standard uh, 30 stitches by 30 rows and we get a nice little stripe pattern at this gauge with the orange and the blue and we get the little spots and blotches of the brown or purple uh, depending on whether it came from my little accident or where we purposely did it we get that through there and I'm going to go ahead and say it. This yarn sadly has not turned me into a blue orange stripe convert. I just still am not a huge fan of blue and orange together like that. Maybe if it was a long gradient change where it started out blue and ombred up into an orange gradient, sort of like the sunset over the ocean, maybe then, but stripes like this just i just personally am not a fan if you like that awesome i'm very happy for you just this didn't win me over unfortunately and the these little brown stripes which i wanted to do them like that because that's how they were in the inspiration photo and i wanted to make sure to really represent that and they look good for that here on the skein um, in fact, I just kept staring at the skein hanging on my yarn drying rack and going, that just looks really cool. You know, especially with the orange side, I'm like, I really need to do an orange tabby cat inspired yarn sometime. And then I knitted it up and I'm like, it looks like you accident, it looks like accidentally like splattered coffee or something on the swatch. It, does not look purposeful. It just looks like it got stained with something. So kind of a fail on that part. It's still, you know, it's a good lesson to know, to, to see how it, what looks good on a skein is going to work up in the yarn. And maybe over a larger scale, it wouldn't look like that, but I really think it's just going to keep looking, you know, this particular these particular colors together, that brown I think is just going to keep looking like something just got splashed on the the finished piece and stained it. So not my favorite skein that I've dyed, but I think that's okay. You can't love everything that you do, and still I learned something. Um, I definitely am going to I'm going to dye some more yarn with this sparkle. Um, yarn. I've never even considered using sparkle colorways before. It just, I was like, okay, yeah, I don't. I'm really not that interested in it. And now I'm like, oh god, that's just so pretty. Yes, I want it. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to be dying that some more. And I like the individual colors. I like the blue. I think we got a perfect shade of blue here. I like the orange. We got a really nice shade of orange. I love this sort of 
greenish color where the two come together. Um, so I definitely want to play with those some more. Just as a full skein itself, for me, it just doesn't work. So I don't know what I will end up doing with this skein of yarn. Um, maybe I'll end up over dyeing it sometime. Maybe I'll find somebody else who wants it. I don't know. Well, I'll figure it out. And then there's our yarn mop. Now, when I was watching this hanging up drying, I'm like, that is such an ugly color. <laughs> First, I thought, well, maybe it'd be a nice border to go along if I were to knit a shawl with the main yarn, you know, because it's it's a match for these this brown in here. I was like, oh, maybe that'd be a nice border to go with it, pull the whole thing together. And I just kept looking at it going, that is not a pretty color. That's a really ugly, mauvey brown color, and I just don't like it. And I think I might just end up over dyeing it or just using it as another mop, yard mop or something else again, right? And you can see it's got sort of some pinkish and some some brown. And what, what I found was really hilarious is one of the first skeins of yarn that I spun is this color. And I didn't like it when I spun it either. But then, then I knitted it up. And check this out. In the skein, it looks like this, this sort of ugly mauve brown, but knitted up in the swatch, it works up to this really pretty dusty rose. Um, I don't know how well you can see it on camera. I don't know how, how good the lighting is to show it, but it is, it's, it's this really pretty dusty rose color that I actually really like. So I am probably gonna try to duplicate this somehow on a full skein of yarn, because I think it'd be a very pretty color. I just found it really kind of funny and interesting that the main skein that I liked when it was hanging up drying, I knitted it and I'm like, nope, nope, that's not good. That's not good at all. And the yarn mop, which is I was watching it, you know, hang up watching it dry, I'm like, oh, that is just not a pretty color. Knitted it up and I'm like, oh, I really like that. So just goes to show that's why it's important to knit a swatch and see how the yarn works up because what you see in the skein is not necessarily how it's going to look once you work it up um, whether you're knitting crocheting weaving whatever i always say knitting because that's the only one of those that i know how to do so that's what i do with it um, and of course you at know, different gauges if i were to this is a 20 by 20 swatch because it's a mini skein so i always do the smaller swatch with that if i were to do it a slightly larger swatch like this it might work up looking a bit different because we do have these brown little sections worked in throughout the different shades of the the pink and at a larger scale those might group together somewhat differently same with this at a larger scale um, we might get some color pooling of the blue and the orange. I don't know. I might have to try knitting up just a big project, see how it turns out. Anyway, this is our finished yarn. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. I know I've been pretty critical, especially of this one, but I would be interested to know what you think of it because obviously different people like different things. And there could be somebody out there who really likes this. Or it could be that everyone in the world takes one look at this skein of yarn and vine, sees how it worked out, and is like, oh my dear God, woman, just completely over dye that with black so we never have to see that ever again. My eyes, my eyes, where is the eye bleach? <laughs> Regardless of how it worked out in the end, I did have fun dyeing this. And I am, as always, grateful to Rebecca of Kidnets for having these monthly challenges and, and challenging me to step outside my color comfort zone. Because if not for that inspiration photo, there is no way I ever would have dyed orange and blue together. It's just not a color combination I would have considered doing. And I certainly would not have done these resists with this brown color that then turned into this lovely dusty, dusty rose color for the yarn mop. Anyway, I hope you had fun watching me dye this yarn. If you have not gone and watched the video of Ingenuity's flight on Mars, 
could do that. I mean, it's just so cool to look at it and think, oh my gosh, that is a man-made machine being flown by humans here on Earth while the machine is on a whole different planet. <laughs> it's just kind of mind-boggling to think of that. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to hit the like button and make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss anything that we try here. Have a wonderful day and I will see you on our next adventure. Bye!